It gets worse. Welcome back, Nerd Squad. The title of issue number two of Ultimatum pretty much sums up what we're going to be focusing on here. We've already talked about 20 other awful things to have come from Earth 1610, and now it's time to delve into another of the top 10 worst things in the Ultimate Marvel Universe of Earth 1610. Join me as we count them down on this part three of the series, and if you missed parts one and parts two, be sure to check them out after for even more blood-curdling and skin-crawling moments, characters, and events. But for now, let us get counting. Number 10, Marvel Zombies. I wouldn't say I hate Marvel Zombies by any means, but it is a world that I'm often reluctant to visit. And yet, here I go, talking about it again. Thank you so much for this, Ultimates. Thank you. I love talking about Marvel Zombies. The alternate universe of Marvel Zombies was actually introduced in the Ultimate line. We'd learn of this alternate reality when the Fantastic Four of 1610 would be forced into a confrontation with the reality-hopping zombie versions of themselves from Earth Z, aka 2149, who first appeared in Ultimate Fantastic Four in issue 21. Marvel Zombies is a pretty cool idea for an alternate Marvel world, to be honest, especially in the early 2000s when zombies were all the rage with the success of both the Walking Dead and Shaun of the Dead. Honestly, I, I really love Shaun of the Dead. I think it's one of my favorite movies. However, Marvel Zombies has also now been done to death, or undeath if you will. Often I've found it zombie stories suffer from feeling the need to use excessive gore in order to sell us. Like sometimes happens with the Ultimates. There are times when it feels as though it's just all about shocking the readers. And I don't mind being shocked, but I like being shocked when it's like for a purpose. Not just being shocked because be shocked by comics, you know what I mean? Number nine, Jean Grey and Wolverine's son? I gotta say, I don't mind Jean Grey becoming a villain in stories, but there are some strange things that go on with her character in terms of motivations on Earth 1610 that do bother me. A big one being the flirty moments that we see between her and Wolverine's son, Jimmy Hudson. For those who aren't aware, Jimmy was the son of Wolverine who was raised by a war buddy of Logan's and his family. Jimmy wouldn't learn until he was older of his true heritage and the fact that he was Logan's biological son. On Earth 1610, Jean Grey spent some time initially dating Wolverine Wolverine before she ended up with Cyclops, and of course before Wolverine died. Cyclops actually also later dies. Jean, Jean just can't catch a break, I guess, in terms of her partner staying alive. Her being the former lover of Wolverine, though, is what makes so many of her flirtatious moments with Jimmy so uncomfortable and weird. He's the son of her ex. Like, what is happening? Also, maybe not everybody got those vibes, but... I definitely got those vibes, and I want to be like, um, what's going on? And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving these lists, all the parts of them, be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. I know sometimes in fandoms we love to hate things, and I feel like that's that's sometimes what these lists are about. But that's okay. It can be fun, as long as it's all in, in good fun, and we can respect the cool stuff that we know about in the comics as well. Number eight, character motivations. Another thing that seemed to happen in the world of Ultimates was that some characters' motivations seemed to uh, make less sense than in 616. There were characters who were deemed evil for no real reason, or people who won fights without much explanation or justification for how they beat down someone who was kind of intended to be at their level or possibly above it. A lot of people wished others ill for strange reasons or did things that completely betrayed what they claimed to believe in. Of course, hypocrisy in the world is a, a very real thing, but I'm not sure we see hypocrisy every day that is quite at the level of what we saw with some characters in Ultimates. Number seven. Blue Tony. One of the weirdest things about Ultimates has to have been the initial origin story that we got for Tony Stark. Originally, Tony Stark was given a very different backstory from his 616 counterpart. He was born as one big brain. Due to his mother suffering from an accident while she was pregnant with him, his genetic makeup was affected and he developed neural tissue throughout his entire body. Hence why I say he's he's like a he's a big brain, despite the fact that, you know, he appears human. So just to be clear, he doesn't look just like a big brain. He, he looks like a person, but he is a big brain, technically. Tony would evidently be hyper-intelligent because of this alteration to his genetics, but he would also have hypersensitive skin. Even the air just touching him felt like intense burns all over his body. Because of this, his father created an armor for him to wear and to protect Tony and allow him to exist mm, semi-normally. This liquid armor his father created also turned his skin blue, hence me calling this point Blue Tony. 
because he was blue. This version of Tony would get two miniseries, but his origins would end up being one of the many things to be retconned away. Number six, retcons. Retcons on retcons on retcons. Would you like some retcons with that retcon? When it comes to Ultimate Universe, there are so many retcons, it can actually be hard to even keep up with all of them. And so many things were just so bizarre that we might not even remember them as existing. Never mind them being retconned out of existence. Seriously, with Ultimates, I really need that retcon button. Friends, I need a button at my desk that I can just smash every time I find a retcon so I can have like a counter of all the ones. And never mind the retcons we may have forgotten, there are also the ones that we do remember, jarringly so, because they were never even justified or explained. The retcons that just randomly showed up and you were like, wait, what's happening now? Did I miss something? No, it was just never explained. Or the ones that their explanations were so strange and far-fetched that we simply struggle to remember them because we're like, that doesn't even make sense, so I'm not even gonna put that in my brain. There is, for example, Wanda, AKA the Scarlet Witch's death, but then she came back to life. Her brother Pietro's death, who also miraculously actually comes back to life. I don't even, I don't even know if that one was ever explained. Black Panther becoming Steve Rogers, but then just going back to being Captain America without much explanation of what happened to T'Challa afterwards. We know he went home, so it kind of gets a little fuzzy there. And of course, we just talked about Blue Tony as well. That origin was retconned actually to be the plot of an anime series based on Iron Man that existed in the universe. Because why not? I mean, at least that's a reason that could make sense. Although, if you owned all of those, those two miniseries that were Blue Tony, you'd be like, what did I buy? <laughs> I bought something that's apparently about an anime now in the world. Hmm. How would you feel about that? Number five, dropped plots. Within Ultimates, there were also tons of covers and teases for plots that never really led us anywhere. Hulk was apparently going to join the X-Men. T'Challa was meant to join the Ultimates, but he randomly left and then he never really returned. Quicksilver intended to follow in his father's footsteps, but never really built to any great, huge plot. Magneto was killed by Cyclops, but then randomly just shows back up again to console his son. And then I don't think we ever see him again after that. So that's confusing. Various covers teased at scenarios that simply never came to pass. And I'm not talking about alternate covers either. I am talking about main covers. Comic book covers are supposed to give us an indication of the story to come. The story that's inside the comic, a hint at something that exists within that issue. Not completely mislead us with promises of grandeur, showing us scenarios or team-ups that just never happen. And with Ultimates, this was sometimes simply the way. For a world that was meant to be made less confusing by the fact that it didn't have years of continuity to deal with, the Ultimate Universe became really messy pretty fast. Number four, Kitty and MJ fight over Spider-Man. This whole fight in Ultimatum just, uh, it kills me. While Peter Parker in 616 is often either shipped with Mary Jane Watson, Gwen Stacy, or Black Cat, Felicia Hardy, in 1610, he, for a time, dated Kitty Pride, who was about the same age as Peter, so. It makes sense. It's kind of cute. And the two also teamed up together fighting crime as supers, which also cute. However, Kitty and Peter wouldn't end up staying together and eventually they would break up and he'd end up more predictably with MJ. Despite the fact that Kitty and Peter ended things uh, pretty amicably, we see Kitty and MJ arguing over who loves Peter more during Ultimatum. Just another reason to consider Ultimatum one of the lowest points of the Ultimate line. There is something so annoying and so ridiculous about these two girls bickering over who really loves Peter the most, especially as the world is like falling apart around them. I'm like, what's happening? Why are we having this conversation right now? Why are we having this conversation at all? I guess it's also just like, I'm like, I don't think that's what would be happening with these characters. In my mind, I'm like, I don't believe it. Number three, Jonathan Hickman. One of the worst things to happen to the Ultimate Universe would probably be Jonathan Hickman leaving it, but also, Maybe just Jonathan Hickman in general. Hickman was one of the creatives called in to help revive the Ultimate line after it had been murked by Ultimatum. In the end, the creative paramedics would not be able to save it, despite breathing new and exciting life into it. In fact, years down the line, after Hickman had left Ultimates, he'd kind of also be the one to destroy it, with his Avengers run where we learn about the incursions and where eventually the Time Runs Out storyline would take place. However, the Ultimate line might be gone, but the Ultimate Universe would be brought back to life later on. In fact, actually Hickman is still a huge Maker fan and even has been intertwining the 1610 version of Reed Richards' Children of Tomorrow into his current X-Men run and the world of X-Men with the Children of the Vault. So 
it's like a mixed bag with Jonathan Hickman. He's like, he's like the worst thing to have left, the worst thing to have happened because he killed it. But he also, obviously, I feel like he loves Ultimates. I feel like it, it does hold a special place in his heart because I feel like he loves a lot of the characters there. So, yeah, I don't know. I love it. Who doesn't love the Maker, though? Am I right? He's just so cool. Such a freaky guy. Number two, Wolverine creeps on MJ. One of the weirdest things to happen in the Ultimate Universe takes place during a case of the body swaps. Wolverine and Spider-Man wake up one day in one another's bodies without any idea of how they got there. Just like in the main continuity reality of Earth 616, these two don't really get along in the Ultimate Universe. They end up discovering what happened and making contact with one another, planning to meet up and basically figure out like how to swap back or like what's going on. But after this all gets resolved, we also learn that Wolverine, who is not just an adult man, by the way, but potentially a super old adult man due to his healing factor, attempted while in Peter's body to make very intimate and adult moves on Mary Jane, Peter's girlfriend, who here is also a teenager. Ew! Like, I know you have a thing for redheads, bub, but stick to redheaded adults, not teenagers. Ugh. Gross. Number one, Ultimate Doom. Doom was such a mess in the Ultimate Universe just because of all the ever-developing retcons about which Doom was the real Doom. Victor Van Dame was our Doom of Earth 1610, but we later learned that actions we believed were him were actually a Doom bot, and that he'd also actually been replaced for a time by Mary Storm. He was like basically going into alternate realities. It's a lot. If you thought Doom of Earth 616 with all of his Doom bots was confusing, the continuity here is... Well, it's really only more of a mess in my mind, especially considering how some important actions were later retconned as not being caused by Doom, and how it became confusing going back to know like when Doom was actually the true Doom, or when it had been an imposter in disguise. Did you get all of that? Yeah. Me neither. What do you think are some of the worst things to happen in the Ultimate Universe? Which stories are you happy got retconned? And which do you wish were not retconned? Let us know in the comments below. This has been Top 10 Nerd, and I'm your host, Amanda McKnight. Till next time, you stay nerdy, YouTube.